Picture this, a tow truck, a girl with a past, and a whole lot of chaos. It all kicks off with Gary and me, and it's a wild ride from there. So grab some popcorn, because you're about to get the inside scoop on a tale that's equal parts hilarious, heartwarming, and downright bonkers. So the film opens with this tow truck guy, Gary, rolling up to my place to snatch my car. Yeah, the very same Gary I ghosted after a whirlwind fling. Awkward, right? But just when I thought things couldn't get crazier, out struts this dude from the night before, decked out in his undies and trying to cop a feel. Let's just say my appeal to Gary's emotions goes out the window. He hauls my car away despite my best please don't protests because guess what? I'm an Uber driver and I need that ride. Now here's the kicker. To catch up with Gary, I slap on my rollerblades and go all in for the chase. And then there's the whole breakfast debacle. I try to lower my car and make a getaway, but guess what? It's still hitched to the truck. Cue the clumsiest pull-out attempt ever, and Gary raises the car back up, leaving me in a total mess. Next thing I know, I'm on probation for my actions, and oh joy, I've got a mountain of back taxes to deal with. My house is hanging by a thread, folks. But that's not all. I've got a gig as a bartender in Montauk, my hometown. I'm slinging drinks with my gal pal Sarah and her hubby Jim. Life's all fun and games until I have a run-in with a customer that ends in a heated argument. My boss ain't too thrilled with my attitude, let me tell ya. Then, during our break, Sarah drops a bomb on me. A job listing that promises a Buick Regal in exchange for dating some rich kid. Now, I ain't no fool. I know what dating really means but desperate times call for desperate measures, especially when those rich folks are trying to snatch my house right from under me. So I show up at the Becker's crib, meet the rents, Laird and Allison, and we chat about their son, Percy. He's a shy, awkward loner with hardly any friends. They wanted someone closer to his age, but guess what? I convinced them that I'm the girl for the job. There's just one catch. Percy can't know it's all a setup. Now, Laird and Allison want me to find Percy at a dog shelter and, well, you know, seduce him. Things get awkward real fast, and I end up driving him home in Jim's van. He maces me. I explain myself. Ouch. And we agree to go on a legit date. But my old classmate, Doug Kahn, swoops in, trying to sell my house. I send him packing because, hey, I'm still determined to save it. Now, Percy and I go on a proper date. We stroll by the lighthouse, and Percy drops the bomb. He's never left Montauk. He's lived in the same house with his folks, and his dad basically gave it to him to get out of their hair. We also meet Percy's former nanny, Jody. Let's just say he gives me the creeps. Later on, Percy and I hit up a fancy restaurant for a pseudo-prom night. He surprises us all by playing the piano like a champ. Only come out at night. Then, this girl from Percy's school, Natalie, shows up and gets a bit too friendly for my taste. I get all protective, but Percy insists on going to her party. I've got a bad feeling about this one, folks. We roll up to the party in a limo, and I'm wading through snooty teenagers to find Percy. It's a mess, but I finally locate him in bed with Natalie. He's sick from booze and ibuprofen and ends up accidentally punching me in the throat. We get kicked out, and Percy wants to get it on, but he's too wasted. I put the brakes on that, let me tell you. Laird and Allison notice Percy's newfound upbeat attitude, but he drops a bomb. He's ditching Princeton to stay close to me. I get a call from Percy while they're discussing this, and he overhears me talking about the car without all the relationship fluff. He's heartbroken, and things are a total mess. Percy invites me over for lunch to meet the rents, and things get awkward, especially when he and his buddy Crispin mess up their car. We decide to get it over with and, you know, have sex, but it's a disaster, to say the least. Percy ends up rejecting me and says some harsh stuff. Ouch! Gary later drops off the beaten-up Buick with my name on it, and I'm back to my Uber grind. Percy retreats to his video games, and Jim and Sarah drop a bomb. They're moving to Florida because Sarah's expecting a baby. I'm feeling all alone now, so 
I finally cave and decide to sell my house to Doug. He's over the moon, and I'm starting to plan my move to California. But wait, there's a twist. Percy's at a Princeton mixer, and I decide to go find him. He's still not ready to talk, so I jump on the hood of his car, and we end up in a wild car chase. We reconcile, and I spill the beans about moving to California. Percy's happy for me, and I surprise him by adopting Milo. And that, my friends, is the roller coaster of a story I've been through. It's been a wild ride, but hey, isn't life always full of crazy twists and turns? <laughs>